Hello, and welcome back to Introducing Persistence. In this lesson, we're going to finish the getStringFromFile method and then run our JUnit test to make sure that our save and get methods work. Now, the getStringFromFile method is very similar to the saveStringToFile method we wrote in the previous lesson. The classes for reading text files are very similar to the ones we just used to write the file, except that they are called file reader and buffered reader instead of file writer and buffered writer. As we did before, we wrap the buffered reader constructor around the file reader constructor, and then the buffering happens automatically. The get method code is very similar to the save method with a couple of new twists. So let's get started. Here, we've got the My Utilities class open for editing. We've already got the java.io package imported, so we don't need to do that again. We'll start by going down and changing the name of the parameter variable from string to file name to make it clear what this variable does. Now, notice that when Eclipse created this method, it put in this inline comment that includes capital T-O-D-O -O to do, and then it says auto-generated method stub. If we click down here on the tasks tab in the lower part of the screen, we see that this to do comment shows up as a task on our task list. If we delete this comment, which we're going to do to get started, and then save our source file, the task is dropped from our task list. This is a handy way to maintain a list of things to do when you're working on a Java project. Just put in an inline comment and it will show up on the task list and then when you complete the task just either change the comment or delete it and it drops it. So it's a handy way of keeping track of things to do inside Eclipse. Now we'll type the start of the method. We'll start by maximizing here to give ourselves some room. Then we're going to say buffered reader br equals null. This is just like we started the other method. Now this is new. We're going to say new. And I'm doing control space there to use the code assist feature of Eclipse that we talked about in the total beginners. Hit enter there and I'm going to go string builder and we'll talk about this in a minute. SB equals new string builder. Now the string builder class in Java is similar to the string class except that it's optimized for adding strings together, or concatenating or appending strings. And we'll talk a little bit more about this as we go on. This next part should be very familiar. We're going to start our try block and then we're going to set our buffered reader equal to a new buffered reader and then we're basically going to wrap that around a new file reader and the file reader is going to name as its argument have our file name. So again this is just like we did with the buffered writer and file writer. Next we'll put in an inner try block as follows. So we're inside the first try block and we open a second try block. The first line is just declaring string s. Now this part is a little tricky. We're going to do a while loop and make sure we get the parentheses right. So it's double parentheses s equals br read line not equal null and then we open up another block underneath the while and we'll put in a comment add line feedback since stripped by read line. And then we're going to use the sb.append and append the string s to the string builder sb and then we're going to append the backslash n which is the new line character. 
Here we're using the same idea of an inner tri block inside this outer tri block that we used in the save method. Now in the save method we were able to write the entire string in one line of code. When reading a text file we have to read it one line at a time. Since there may be many lines in the file we have to continue to read lines until we've reached the end of the file. That's why we need a loop in this method. Now the while loop repeats the execution of a block of code, this block of code here between the curly braces, as long as the boolean condition inside these parentheses is true. Now this one is a little tricky because we're doing two things at once. First, inside this inner parentheses we're setting the string variable equal to the read line method of the BR. So we're actually reading the line of the file and setting the string variable s equal to that. Then we're evaluating the result of that which is s and checking to see if it's null or not. Now the way to read this is as follows. Read the next line of the file that BR is pointing to and put the result in string s. If s is not null, then execute this block of code, which means append s to our string builder sb, add it onto the end of the string builder, and then add on a new line character at the end. And then repeat this until eventually we get to the end of the file, in which case s will be null, and then we'll come out of our while loop. Now the read line method reads the file a line of text at a time, meaning all of the text until the next new line character. Now the read line method does not include the line feed character when it returns the string. So that's why we have to add it back down here because the new line is stripped out when the read line reads the file. As with the save method, the buffering happens automatically just because we've wrapped this file reader inside the buffered reader class. Now there's no limit on how large a text file can be. If we were reading a very large file, this loop could be executed thousands or even millions of times. That's where the string builder class comes in. In Java, you can add string objects just using the plus sign, and this works fine for cases where you're just doing this a few times. In this case, where we could be doing this many, many times, we want to use the string builder class, which is made for this type of operation. So it's going to be much faster to do this with the string builder than with just a normal string. Now we'll continue with the rest of the method. Here we're at the end of the try block, the inner try block. So now we'll put our finally. And again, we're just going to do the close inside the finally block. Now we need to be careful to come outside the outer try block before we add the catch block. One trick in Eclipse to help keep track of code blocks is to click next to a curly brace and we see that the matching curly brace is outlined in this light rectangle. So if I click here we can see that the matching curly brace is the beginning so this is the end of the of the outer try block. Another trick is if we go control shift P the cursor actually moves between the matching curly braces. So we'll move outside the try block and type our catch and we're going to catch an IO exception just like we did before. We'll call it EX and then inside the catch we're just going to do the EX print stack trace. Then we're going to move outside the whole try catch block and we're going to return SB to string and we'll save our file. Now this is very similar to the save method. We put the close 
method in the inner finally block so it will execute whether or not the inner try block throws an exception. Then at the end, string builder is not a string and we want this method to return a string so we have to use the toString method of the string builder to convert it back to a string so that we can return a string value. Now at this point we've compiled cleanly we don't have any problems so we're ready to run our my utilities test class and see if our methods work. So we'll go down here and open up the My Utilities test class. We'll go run, run as, JUnit test. And it works! How about that? Now notice that we get our print stack trace output printed to the console. If I double click here we can maximize this so we can see it. If we look at this output, we can see where these are coming from. Here it says My Utilities Java 14. If we click on that, this takes us to this line in our save string to file where we tried to create a new file writer object. Now if we go back, we can see that the line that generated this was my utilities test Java line 30 and if we click on that we can see that this is where we tried to save a file that shouldn't be saved so that's just what we would expect now if we go back and look at the second stack trace We see that it's where we tried to create a new file reader. And again, if we go back to where this was generated from, to the My Utilities test, we can see this is where we tried to read a file that didn't exist. So both of these stack traces come from our test, and they're what we expect. So both of these exception conditions in our test were caught without the program halting. And the stack trace provides information that lets the user figure out where the problem came from. Now recall that our test creates a string file called testSaveToString.txt. We should be able to see this file on our disk directory. Now if we go back to the Package Explorer, we don't see it here yet. If we right click on the project, go down here and select refresh, then here we see test save to string dot text underneath our persistence tutorial folder. If we double click on this, it opens up this text file inside an Eclipse editor and there is our test file. In the next lesson, we're going to download a third-party Java library to help with the XML conversion, learn how to look at the source code for the Java language classes, and start work on a test method for the XML convert methods. This is the end of Lesson 5. I'm Mark Dexter saying so long for now.